hello friends this is going to be a definitely a different type of video today <laughs> we are not going dashing we are currently making beer ogs. yes beer ogs from scratch it's very similar to a ronza when i looked it up the only difference is runs are square or rectangular and beer rocks is round but i've never made round beer rocks i always make them rectangular it's a whole lot easier when it comes to the dough so currently we have sausage hamburger and onions and then we will add cabbage salt and pepper and then we'll be working on the bread actually we're trying to work on that right now so we will put the camera on the tripod so you can see how we make this hope you enjoy all right guys so our recipe calls for one cup of milk and it calls to heat it up and all that stuff but i never i don't do that part I just make sure that my yeast is active in a bowl with some warm water and some sugar and let it sit and that's all I do because I'm not going to heat up the milk and all that because I'm always afraid that I'm going to um, mess that up. So then it calls for and I don't know how much of this you need to have the sugar but because I know it's to activate the um, yeast that it calls for a fourth a cup of sugar we'll put that in there and we'll find the whisk that's not the one and just whisk that around and then we've got our yeast over there but I'm going to add some of the flour since this milk is cold and it's funny because I just talked to my son earlier and they're making the exact same thing so they were going to make Erox as well so that is kind of comical because I decided I didn't feel like going out. I've got this head cold thing going on and yeah, I'm just done. So I don't have to do that. Whisk it, the mixture to combine and whisk in two cups of flour. Yeah, that was lovely. And then I have my oven turned on to 170 degrees because that's where we're going to proof this bread. I mean, has our, my oven has a, oops, a proofing, a proof setting. So that's what we're going to use because we keep our house at 65 degrees and you know occasionally we turn it up we turn you know have the fireplace going things like that so we I don't know if we'll have to make more bread um, less bread more of the other mixture or what but this we'll probably have to do a double batch of bread, but I'm not making it all um, at once because I never, I don't usually have luck making double batches of many things. I mean, even cookies. When I make cookies, I pretty much do a single batch and then make another batch because it just doesn't really work for me so here is our yeast mixture 
it was just a little bit of water is what I did and so that's that Let's see um, what it calls for next um, an egg see one egg and two bo two tablespoons of melted butter cool yeah whatever um don't usually heat it up that much that it would um need to cool off that much when i cut with that so, and There's two tablespoons. I'm gonna put it in a bowl and put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. That'll be melted. It shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be that um, hot. So yeah, we're gonna do that. Slide that over. I don't know how much of this mess you can see. Yes, I am a very messy cook. And I try to clean it all up, but it doesn't always get cleaned up. So, that. Get an egg out. with a spoon but that's okay or could have done it in the blend in the mixer with the bread paddle that would work too so let me get this all cleaned up and we will be back all right that's funny because it says to whisk in this egg and stuff but yeah you see what the whisk does it just does not incorporate everything so we just stirred it up so then it tells us to add eggs that then you start adding flour a quarter cup at a time until um, you can get it to all come together. So, yeah, I got water on my screen. Because it calls for four cups, and we put two cups in. But then it says just to do them at a quarter cup at a time. Because you don't want to add too much flour. But I think this first time we're going to add two. Because I'm pretty sure it's going to take more than one. So, we're going to just stir this in. Yeah, this might have been better to do in the mixer on with the dough hook. But that's okay. So, what did y'all do on Sunday? Did y'all stay home? Did you watch football? I mean, obviously, I stayed home. 
to do this, but I've been kind of in the mood to make some freezer meals to help out with dinners during the week. I mean, hubby usually, you know, he cooks at least probably about, I don't know, two or three times a week. And I usually do stuff for a lot. He, I think he, well, usually he does two Mondays and Tuesdays. I do Wednesdays and Thursdays. And this is like during the work week. And then we go, usually go date night Friday. And then he usually cooks on the weekend while I'm out dashing. So that's kind of our little routine. I'm just so ready to be able to retire. I'm just, yeah, I'm just tired. I mean, I'm tired of getting up every morning and having to be somewhere, you know, because you got to be at work, you got to be there on time, you got to be there for nine hours every day. And yeah, I'm just getting, getting a little tired. Been there, it's coming up 20 years the same place so that's kind of let's see that's a cup um, now what we're gonna do is put this on the counter after I wipe it off again We got to put some flour down and knead this up and kind of make it a little bit a smooth dough. Now that'll be fun to clean up here in a minute. So we're going to take this and just put it out on the counter. Screw it down the side of the bowl. Get some of that flour out. And wipe off our spoon here. Let's take our rings off. Get all doughy and let's see how much of this we can incorporate into this. It says you can knead it five to ten or ten to fifteen minutes, I think. Yeah, that's a long time if you ask me. A long time of kneading dough. But you want to get as much flour incorporated that it's smooth. And kind of an elastic dough. I mean, we've got, yeah, see, it's starting to get sticky. And that's what you don't want. You want to keep adding until it's not, until it's smooth and it's not all sticky. This is like one and a half with this one. And then it'll go 
into the oven to rise and you let it rise for an hour and it should double in that hour that you that's the fun part is that you're doing all this stuff and it takes a while for dough to rise because you want it to you know double in size but it's all right we have some other things we can do while as i finished hubby's shirt i have some other ones that i ordered and of course i ordered i don't know i think the it reset the sizes so two of the shirts are smalls which no one around here can wear a small so we may um, do a giveaway and give those away or give one away and use one for something else this is probably getting about where I want it to be it's not really sticky anymore that's stickiness is going away not near as sticky as it started out to be I mean it's a little sticky so we'll do one more that should be that should be enough I think and then my daughter called she was like what are you doing and I told her she's like oh can we have some I was like I'm making this stuff to for dinner and for us to eat you know later on but that's okay we did that um, fundraiser for that family and bought all that like 40 pounds of hamburger meat so I'll probably give her some of that so that they can maybe spend their money on some other things because they got two little ones and so probably give my son some as well all right i think that is about it so we will put this in another bowl and we'll spray it with some pan so it doesn't stick and then put it in the oven all right guys so we punched our bread down and we put it out on our work surface and now it says to i don't know make these into eight pieces but i'm not sure how you make this into eight Maybe we'll try this. Because some of these, like the end ones, are going to need, we're going to take stuff out of this. Like a little bit out of this one. It with this and some with this one and put it with this and see how that turns out because we have way more dough than we have um, I mean we have more filling than we have dough so let's grab the rolling pin we're going to just roll these out a little bit. Let's 
kind of like you were making like pie. So try to make them round if you can. same one that I used to make um, meatballs with and get a big scoop and put it in the middle and we're gonna just pull up the edges just like that and huh let me see if we can stuff a little bit more in here. Just like that. Pull that up. Pinch them all together. And there you have it. That's just like that. You got one. We'll just set it off to the side. Yeah, we're gonna have to make some more dough because it's definitely not. We have way more filling than we have dough. But that's okay. The dough's not so bad to make. So just like that, a couple scoops of filling, or maybe one and a half, like that. And then we just start bringing the sides up, pinching them together, like that. Shove that back in there. There you have it. Yeah, that one I rolled a little bit thin. So I think this is the one that all goes together, hopefully. Well, I hope you enjoyed are cooking in the kitchen learning my ex-husband's family secret of beer rocks and I mean yeah they're kind of a pain to make but if you can take the time to sit down and just do not sit because you're standing but to do a bunch of them at once then yeah it's definitely worth it to have some great you know little meals in the freezer or for dinner I mean I would you know I would probably say you know two per person and then we bake these up and put eat them with some mustard which is always good some dijon mustard um because this does have sausage and hamburger you can make it with just hamburger now we did put onions in it and you can also do it without the onions if you know if you don't like onions or someone in your family doesn't like onions you can leave the onions out but this is a really good little dough recipe so I mean you could use it for other things than you know this so there. but yeah pretty pretty good 
I'm going to finish doing these and we'll get them in the oven and I'll see you back when they're all done and we'll have see if hubby will do a taste test for us later I think he's still asleep as far as I know he wasn't feeling too good we've all got this crazy sinus stuff going on so it's not the funnest thing but eh, this might be enough since I'm putting more of the filling in each one then it's kind of oh sorry I didn't mean to hit you there but yeah we'll see um, we might have a little bit left but shoot I'd eat this just plain because it's really good I did add salt and pepper as well as some powdered um, garlic to this mixture and believe me salt and pepper is hard for me to add to anything because I my ex-husband was one of those he would salt and he would salt everything um, before he tasted it and so I just started cooking with no 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 pepper no salt so it's been a long time it's been a very long time so it's and it's still hard for me to um, stop <laughs> doing the no salt so my husband now knows that he's got to salt all of his food because I rarely salt anything but we got about four more to go and we will see you back when they're all ready thanks for joining us on this cooking day all right guys so they turned out like this and we're gonna take a bite mm. 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 pretty good not bad mm -hmm. so we got nine out of this batch I'm making two more batches so Thanks for joining us on this cooking <laughs> episode, making beer rocks from scratch. Mm -hmm. We'll be back to our regularly scheduled program, hopefully tomorrow. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. That's